I'm going to walk around because I, I can't talk and stand in one place at the same time. Uh, this subject actually is not a new one. I've been writing about and doing research on non-ionizing radiation, which is radiation that affects your body that doesn't cause anything other than potentially tissue heating. That's microwave ovens, good example of that. The purpose of the microwave oven is to heat tissue, right? So obviously some people are worried about the fact that uh, radio frequency signals represent a source of non-ionizing radiation. And they're thinking, wait a second, you're telling me that's the same stuff my microwave does? How can this not be dangerous to my health? So it's a logical question. We're all green and healthy these days. So it's fair to ask the question whether 5G, which is using new bands of signals and new frequencies we haven't used before, whether those in fact change uh, our perceptions and our need for guardedness about health hazards. So. What I wanted to do is uh, start out with one slide, and, and this is just physics, right? It, and it has to do with the way that RF energy, including millimeter waves, will decay as it moves away from the radio, right? Now, this is a logarithmic decay function. For those of you who remember your math, this means whatever signal you start at, as you move away from the radio, it's gonna drop off dramatically, just off a cliff, within the first, say, one or two radii. After that, it keeps dropping to the, you get a nice long, low tail. So rule number one, whether you actually think there's any scientific uh, danger or not, as you move away from the radio, you're safer. The signals are simply going to decay to the point that uh, sometimes we can barely measure them, right? So if you're concerned about this stuff and you use a cell phone, don't keep it against your brain for long periods of time. It's just logic, all right? Your transmitter's very short radii. Move it out here, it's less. Move it three feet away, it's much less than that. Uh, text, use uh, other forms of communication, use Bluetooth, use earbuds, whatever you like. But keep it away from your brain if you're worried about it. It's just like if you're wearing seatbelts in a car, it's a good sound precaution to take because some people get killed in cars. Doesn't mean you shouldn't use cars, but you should always wear your seatbelt. <clears throat> the, uh, the way that we tend to medically measure the power and the danger of any kind of RF signal is uh, sort of the geometry is space. A signal that launches from a radio is going to spread as it leaves the radio. So we tend to capture the full energy over the full surface area of that radio signal as it hits your body, right? And that's why we get this function of basically one over four, one over nine. As you increase the radii, that signal then begins to drop into the dirt, right? So again, the main uh, rule here is don't sit next to a cell tower radio for too long. If you're climbing a cell tower and you're a technician, limit your exposure to say 20 minutes at a time and come back off the tower. Now, oddly enough, most people, if you just ask the person on the street, what's more dangerous, being too close to a cell tower or, be, or using a mobile phone, most people are going to choose cell tower. I don't know why that is, but most people think the cell towers are the things that are dangerous. In truth, the mobile in your hand is much more dangerous than the cell tower. And I'm not saying it's gonna cause an illness, I'm not saying it's gonna cause cancer, it's just the power levels next to your brain, you're right near the radio. It's got to be, uh, the signal has to be at its highest maximum output right next to your brain, it has to be because that signal has to go back to the tower at some point and it's gonna drop logarithmically every step of that way back to the tower. So oddly enough, the mobile is the thing you worry about, not the tower. Um, the energy, and, and by the way, if you, you want the slides immediately, give me your email address and I'll, I'll send them to you today. They will all eventually be available, but I don't know how long it's gonna take. Hot links are embedded, so every time I cite a study, you can go straight to the website where the study is. The um, Cell tower energy is really, really low, uh, like 100 to 5,000 times lower than a standard broadcast TV transmitter, for example, right? So if I had a choice, if somebody said, would you live under a cell tower? I would say, well, 
I might not want to live under a cell tower for aesthetic reasons, but I'm not worried about the cell tower per se. If you ask me about the TV transmitters, I'd say the same thing. I probably don't want to live under a TV transmitter, but even if I did, I would choose a cell tower over a TV transmitter because the power levels are so much lower. Uh, to the extent that there's any scientific evidence on the um, impact of RF energy on humans, it's probably the same as coffee, tea, <laughs> glass containers. That sounds crazy. Or some pickled vegetables, right? I mean, that's the level of risk. When you, you're gonna, there are hundreds of studies that you can read on the subject, and they'll sometimes say, "Well, it's a potential carcinogen." Well, yes, but so is coffee, right? The other problem that you will tend to see with these hundreds of studies that are out there is that they tend to confuse causation with correlation. Now, if I were to correlate any disease that you might ever be exposed to uh, and then ask you, do you use a mobile phone? You're gonna get 100% 100 of, 100 of people saying, yes, we use mobile phones. Yes, there's a correlation between human beings and mobile phones. That doesn't mean the mobile phones are causing anything else in your life. It's just scientifically, if I do a study and say, do you have this disease and do you use a mobile phone? The answer will always be yes, of course, right? The other issue is some of the studies force you to do things that are completely not realistic. They'll take a, a mouse, put a radio transmitter above its cage, turn the signals on as though that mouse were initiating a cell phone call and then just leaving that cell phone there for eight hours a day for six days a week. Now, human beings don't do that. So can you get some observable results? Sometimes you can get an observable result, but it doesn't reflect the sort of real world use of a mobile phone by any, any human being out there, nor does it reflect the fact that human beings don't normally live close enough to a cell tower radio, which is, again, by definition at the top of the, the tower, uh, to be exposed to the highest levels of emitted power. So my conclusion there is, yeah, be careful about it. There's no reason to take an unreasonable risk, but I wouldn't recommend that you give up air travel. And when you get on an airplane and you go up to 40,000 feet, we're exposing you to x-rays and some other sources of solar radiation, which we would recommend you don't do every day. But we never tell people don't get in on an airplane. So balance the risk with the dangers because there are lots of rewards. This is simply a take-home slide for those of you who want to have access to some of the studies that are out there by the World Health Organization, the FCC. Uh, National Institutes of Health or others. The point is, the only studies that I've ever been able to find that I trust suggest that so far there's no evidence that there's any danger whatsoever from the, the cell towers. It doesn't mean there is, in fact, no danger in the future. Maybe we just haven't found it. Maybe we haven't studied it, it well enough, but right now we're okay. What I've got here is simply, again, to give you some sense of power levels and how they differ from, say, electrical power towers, uh, electric trains, TV and computer screens, TV and radio transmitters, and then mobile phone base stations. Again, no matter how you slice this thing, the emitted power from a cell tower is always relatively low. So if you're going to be worried about this sort of thing, then you can worry about things like the sun. Don't go out in the sun. That's what you can do to keep yourself healthful. Okay, I'm out of time. That is my last slide. Thank you very much.